Hello. So, I'm sorry I can't be here in person, but I made a podcast. I want to talk about deployment deadlock because it's a problem that keeps coming up with us. Deploying protocols is hard. It is really hard. And most ITF protocols, most standards protocols in most organisations don't make it. It's difficult. Now, even harder is changing a protocol once we deployed. We found after we deployed um, a few hundred thousand copies of HTTP, it was really, really difficult to fix the problems that we already knew about in the protocol. You, know, you just don't get a second chance somehow. Once something is out there, you have to have a real big incentive to switch. Now the problem with security is that security rarely provides you with a functional benefit. And security is never the number one objective of any party. It's always number two. It only comes top on all the polls when you ask people to rate the top five priorities. And it's always one of the top five, but it's never the first. So getting people to switch an existing protocol for security benefit is a really, really tough sell. Now, looking at the traditional way that we deploy new protocols, such as moving from SHA-1 to SHA-N, the way that we look at it is, first of all, we get the browser providers to support new algorithms in the browser. And then, at some point, the CA will switch over and will provide certs. And then at some point, the merchants will start buying those certs. However, there's a real, real problem because you don't get more security in an application by adding a stronger crypto algorithm. You only improve the security by withdrawing the weak algorithm. And when we start to look at when that happens, that is much harder. So, when does a merchant switch? Do they switch when there are no browsers out there that are supporting SHA-N? Well, of course not, because they're going to lose all the business. How about 50%? They're going to lose half their business for a security upgrade that affects SSL, that stops the credit card companies from losing money because they depend on a password that's written on the front of every card. No. How much business is a merchant going to be prepared to lose in order to improve security? I don't know the answer, but I'm pretty sure that it's less than 1%. And so how much business is a CA going to give up by insisting on only issuing certificates by SHA-N? Well, it's going to be 100%. And how much business would a browser provider lose by doing the same thing? 100%. So, let's look at what happens. We end up with a deployment deadlock. The merchants aren't going to shift, not until you've got 99% support for this new hash algorithm in the browsers that are deployed and being used. Is that going to take one decade, two decades? And nobody else can step in and force the issue. The CAs can't, the browser providers can't. Expecting the browser providers or the CAs to step in and put their business on the line to force this transition is like expecting Cisco to announce, OK, we really need to move to IPv6, so we're not producing any more IPv4 equipment. Yeah, we, can expect, we know what would happen to Cisco stock price if they did that. So the outcome is a deadlock. Nobody will move until everything else is in place. And that can take too long because SHA-1 may not last 20 years. So how do we fix it? Well, the first step is to recognise that there is a problem. You can't fix a problem until you recognise it's a problem. And this is a problem that demands advanced planning. You can't fix it if you wait. The 
The second thing is that we have to recognise that it is our problem. We are standards engineers. Standards engineers is about diplomacy and we have to understand all the issues that affect our protocols, even if they fit into boxes called economic, economics by the academicians. This is our problem. And the second, third thing, we have to change our specifications somewhat to resolve this deadlock. Basically, the way you resolve a network deadlock is that you break the cycle of ungranted requests such that the two things that were deadlocking can happen independently. We need to do the same thing here. We need to uncouple the dependency on browser support so that the legacy browsers don't need to be shut off in order to make the new browsers more secure. And we can do that by a number of ways. One way is the way I suggested using the OCSP route. The second way that we could do would be to issue two pairs of certificates and to have use SSL negotiation. That might be a little trickier as we need to touch server-side infrastructure across the whole net. That might be hard. And CAs must be able to issue a, a note to say, hey, I don't use SHA-1 anymore. And it's got to be designed so that legacy and browsers are not affected until SHA-1 fails and the new browsers can make the full use of the SHA end security. And when a SHA 1 fails or is just about to fail, the CAs must be able to say, hey, don't use SHA 1 anymore. We're not using it on our routes. We're not using it for our end entity search. So she see one, don't trust it. And so the next steps, well, we need to define concrete fix for this in PKIX. And we really need to bring economists into the process of IETF to help us when we're designing protocols to say, hey, you've got a deadlock issue there. You've got to look at the real business issues. This is how we can address them. Because you know, there's no point in designing protocols that nobody's going to use. Thanks for your time. And hope to see you next time.